Welcome to the Rachel Varga Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures performed. I'm an international clinical trainer for other physicians and nurses as well, celebrity skin expert, having been featured on some of the world's top proactive aging podcasts and much, much more. Learn more at rachelvarga.ca and enjoy today's episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone right here to the Rachel Varga podcast. In today's show, we are discussing the brain and skin connection, as well as slowing aging connection. Because if you think about it, if you haven't thought about it this way yet, the brain is the master control center of everything else in the body. So there shouldn't be a disconnect between brain health and skin health. They're all intimately and intricately connected. So in today's show, we have Patrick Porter joining us. He is the CEO and founder of very important technology that I, the first time I used it, I was like, wow, this technology gave me a wonderful, um, pretty in-depth and interesting, beautiful experience. And he is the CEO and founder of the company called BrainTap, which is a wonderful piece of technology that you can use at home. And I've been loving this concept of training the brain for a number of years now. And when my brain is on point, everything else follows. So Patrick Porter is an award-winning author, educator, consultant, entrepreneur, and speaker with 20 years of experience operating the largest self-help franchise in the world. He has become a highly sought after expert within the personal improvement industry, having sold over 3 million of his self-help products worldwide. Dr. Porter has been on the cutting edge of brainwave entrainment technology for 32 years. His team was voted the best new health app at 2019 Consumer Electronic Show. His newest brain training platform, BrainTap, is distinctively designed to activate the brain's neuroplasticity. The Brain Tap headset uses light and sound technology in combination with Dr. Poor's proprietary guided visualization audio sessions to help people achieve brain fitness, overcome stress, lose weight, stop smoking, manage pain, accelerate learning, enjoy superb sleep, and make any number of lifestyle improvements. He is the author of the award-winning bestseller, Awaken of the Genius, Mind Technology for the 21st Century, Discover the Language of the Mind, Thrive in Overdrive, How to Navigate Your Overloaded Lifestyle, among others. It is an absolute treat and honor and blessing to have Patrick Porter, the founder of BrainTap, here on the Rachel Varga podcast. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for that introduction. That was awesome. It's an absolute honor to have you here and let's just share with everybody, the first time I used your technology was at a health entrepreneur event. And this event changed my life. And one of the first uh, pieces of technologies that I used was yours. And it actually got me into a very beautiful state within just a few moments. And the message that I received at this event while I was using technology was, Rachel, you are in the right place at the right time with the right people. And it's nice having tech and then also various uh, personal and spiritual practices to also get that validation. So just wanted to pass along to our audience that I have had quite a profound experience with your technology. I would love to hear from you. What is your story and how did you develop the technology? Yeah, so it's uh, a kind of unique background. I was born uh, the son of an alcoholic. So in my book, I actually talk about how I was blessed to be the son of an alcoholic because I had to reframe that, right? Um, I don't let the past dictate my present or future. But what happened was my dad was helped by the church, actually. They came over and they said, hey, Michael, we need to teach you how to relax. So there's a technique called the Silva Method. Some of your listeners might be aware of that. My dad was one of the first Silva instructors. So I grew up uh, traveling around lower Michigan every other weekend doing seminars with my dad. So I've been in this business actually since I was 12 years old and helping people, you know, uh, setting up chairs and helping him. And then I went to school for electronics, not thinking I was going to follow my dad into the business of seminars and helping people. But in electronics, I, I ran into a group actually in Vegas, and that's a kind of a whole spiritual discovery. I had a guy that I worked with in Vegas. I used to do some entertainment there, and uh, the guy's name is Gil Gilly. He was a 
a mentalist. And he told me, he said, you need to go to this event and you're going to meet somebody there. He told me her name was Linnea. He said, she's going to revolutionize the way you do business. And nobody's seen this technology before. And I went there and I met a woman between events. Her name was Linnea. Um, weird series of events. During that event, the founder of the SILS, the Sensory Input Learning System, died. And nobody had any of the how to build this technology. You know, they had the technology, but nobody knew how to build it. And I just happened to be there. And I said, you know, I have a degree in electronics. I can help you rebuild this. And they and I said, where are you going after this? And they said, well, we're going to go to Scottsdale because that's where my family is. And I said, well, I have an office in Scottsdale off Scottsdale Road. And so we hooked up and the rest is kind of history. We didn't invent the we were going to recreate the sills, which was a ten thousand dollar piece of equipment for practitioners. But while we were building it, they built a prototype, a little small prototype. It was called the MC Square because I really like Einstein. And so. Um, when we built it, I said, let me see if I can get that to work. And I started using it in my clinic and um, it worked like a champ. And I said, you know, we could sell these. And they go, what are you talking about? I said, can you build me 10 of those? Nobody had any money. I mean, we were all poor. This was back in the eighties. And um, they said, what are you going to sell them for? I said, I don't know. We'll sell them for $400. So we started selling them for $400 and we sold as many as they could build. I mean, we just went crazy. And then I started my franchise company. And I sold that in 2002 just because it was, I felt like I had done everything I could there. And, um, but with the way I sold it, I wouldn't do that away again because I sold it over time. And then the company went out of business in, in 2012. In 2013, I reopened and I wanted to reinvent this technology. And that's where BrainTap came in. And we, with BrainTap, there's five technologies in one. The old technology was only two. It was, it was really uh, photaic light retinal flashing and binaural beats. We've added in isochronic tones. We've added in uh, also noje frequencies with which rotate through the ear lights, which we can get into all this a little bit. But what we wanted to do was because now we can measure the brain back in the eighties, there was no feedback. When somebody says that they, you know, they have a degree in neurofeedback, there was no neurofeedback back then. It was all biofeedback. So we would look at respiration, temperature, heart rate, all of these things. And we would teach people how to relax and get rid of pain. And then came out with an LED panel that showed us how to do the brain. So that really accelerated what we did. And it allowed us to actually track what really works and what doesn't work. And then now, 10 years ago, I partnered with a group in Russia and we have a technology called NeuroCheck. Five minutes, I can tell you the state of your nervous system and I can show you what works and what doesn't work in the wellness industry. In fact, two years ago at NIH, when we were there presenting one of our papers uh, on the stress response, uh, the head of the NIH is actually still helping us. They want to take the technology and make it one of the one of the methods to prove out alternative medicine. Because right now the problem is everybody feels good with it, but nobody can validate it. Well, if it affects the nervous system, we can show that with the neurocheck. So it's it's we're still evolving and doing what we're doing. We do a lot with red light, like what you have behind you in your in your in your podcast. That because I hired um, I hired the the probably the world leading expert behind Hamlin out of Harvard. He actually wrote the chapter for Dr. Hamlin, photobiomodulation in the brain. That's our science officer, Dr. Francisco Cedral. So we do a lot also with red light therapy. We just, anything to do with light, sound and vibration, we're very interested in and how that affects the brain and how it affects the body. And there is a big effect on that. So. I think it's really important that we actually have technologies to counteract the technologies that are interfering with us. I would go so far as to say that the biggest threat to humanity at this point is electromagnetic frequencies. I would go also so far as to say, and these are just my opinions, that this is like the smoking of our generation. And when you mention things like light, when you mention things like vibration, for myself being relatively sensitive to people, places and things around me, I do have to make sure that I take that time to get outside, ground barefoot. When I'm talking about photobiomodulation, let me tell you, the sunrise, the sunset is the best and most unadulterated and free source of photobiomodulation to help with sleep, circadian rhythm balancing, hormone balancing, and all that stuff. But these days, yes, we do need to get a little bit more sophisticated in the way that we navigate and cut through the noise and all these things that are trying to interfere with us that are sold to us as a bill of it's going to make your life more convenient. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't thought about all the smart technology in this way yet, 
I encourage you to kind of question everything and think about ways that you can biohack your air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and make sure that your detox pathways are working properly. Because when we're talking about light and frequencies, uh, they're forms of radiation. And a lot of my girlfriends, they're going to their practitioners and naturopaths, and they're hearing that they have high levels of radiation in their body. I wonder why. All right. So some tech is good for us to help counteract the technology that is not so good for us, but is sold to us as being helpful to us. And no, this isn't medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. Patrick Porter, you have worked with some of the leading experts in the space of health, wellness, technology, all of this. So you're an OG in this space. And I'm really curious to hear from you. You dropped a couple of words like spirituality and frequency and light and all of that. I am very interested in studying something called radiance. And when people's brains work better, they're going to have better skin. They're going to be better able to connect and be less interfered with and be more present. I would love to hear from you. Based on your experience working with some of the top individuals in the innovative space of health, wellness, biohacking, and other things, those that are doing really good work in the world, how would you describe them? And how would you describe this word called radiance? What is radiance to you? Let me, let me kind of frame this in this way. In the past, when I was in the 80s, just getting into this and going to Sedona and all these places that are, you know, they have spiritual energy and things of that nature. I would see posters and uh, things on cars. I am light. I am light. Well, our science officer, Francisco Cedral, most people know who Tom Brady is. He's a quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He has clothing called TB12. What this clothing does that he doesn't advertise is it reflects back your own infrared light. Every person on earth, has 810 to 850 nanometer light coming from their bodies. We can measure this now. And the biggest place it comes is your heart. And they did a study during COVID and they showed people who are optimistic, positive, that look for solutions instead of problems. They actually, and people who are in a state of gratitude and love and peace, they actually generate 200 times more light from their heart center than others. Now, Tom Brady, the, his recovery where they call it, we're doing that all the time. So when you walk into the room, I tell our professionals all the time, we have 3,000 clinics using BrainTap. I say, when you walk into the room, who you are as energy shows up way ahead of you. And that energy, something called biophotonic exchange, is actually changing your genetics every 40 seconds. You are a different person on every genetic pair every 40 seconds based on the sunlight you ex you're exposed to or the light you're exposed to, the sound you're exposed to, the frequencies you're exposed to, the food you're exposed to, everything. Everything, you are never the same person. So it always amazes me when people try to drag their past on and on with them. You know, we're all new and different. And we're light beings. We know that now. That back in 2003, when they did the uh, map the human genome, this was a lie. They only map 1%. But in 19... Uh, in 2018, they finally have technology that can show that 99% is changing so rapidly that our technology can't keep up. So radiance to me is somebody, when they walk in the room, you actually feel them. They have a, there's a certain presence. Some people call it charisma, things of that nature, but really it's our energy. And when, when people are willing to share that energy, other people feel it. They just, they, they go, I just like that person. I don't know why. Or they go, I just, Something about that person. You no, know, there's always those energy drainers, the energy vampires and people like that. You know, and for me, I just say, you know what? There's an infinite amount of energy. I'm going to give them all they need. They need some help. You know, these people, you know, as long as you don't give away your power, you use infinite amount. You don't have to worry about it. So there's a lot. And I think radiance comes from when you realize you're part of the solution. You don't want to be part of the problem. You know, there are people that wake up every morning and they're looking for solutions to life. And like you said earlier, we have technology problems. We need technology solutions. No one's gonna get rid of their smartphones, but we need to teach them how to use it correctly. No one's gonna 
you know, not get be in their house. We're designed actually to live like in the Serengeti. We're supposed to be outside 12, 14 hours a day, you know, in, in the summer, especially or in the, those kind of peak light hours. So, you know, even Kronos therapy, when they did it in India, they would take people, if you were mentally ill 10,000 years ago in India, the Vedas would tell you to go outside two hours before sunrise because that's when infrared light is hitting the planet at the most intense amounts. So when you think about radiance, these people know, they simply do things that make them feel good. They follow their bliss. They realize that they can be a solution by example. You know, uh, there are people that are talkers and I'm, we've all seen them. And there are people that are doers. I love doers. People that, that do what they say, they're, they're true to their mission. Even it might hurt them, they're going to follow through with what they say. These people, they just have, they have infinite energy. They seem like nothing slows them down. I, I love the saying that the Boy Scouts have here in America. They say, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. And that's, that's to me what a radiant person is. They just have so much energy. They want to give it away. They want to, they want to share. They, even when something's bad, you know, sometimes it makes those people that are the energy drainers kind of a little sick to their stomach because they'll go, you can't really be that. I've actually been accused of being too damn positive. And I'm like, I said, I would rather be. I love that. <laughs> I, said, I said, I'd rather be disappointed occasionally than disappointed every morning when I wake up. You know, there are people that get up every morning and they don't get out of bed till they're adequately stressed. <laughs> you know, so you, and that, that affects more than you would think because that affects every genetic pair. Like I'm saying, your thoughts change 2,300 gene expressions. So if you can be optimistic, positive, and radiant, that, that means that the mitochondria, which is the, the energy of the cells, is radiating. Now you're going to have healthy skin. You're going to have a healthy brain. You're going to have a healthy body. And it's like beads on a string. Nothing is disconnected. Everything is connected in this world. So everything you do, everything you say, it all comes back, you know, in you know, so I think that, you know, that's what we're doing really is helping people to find their radiance. And when they do, they'll find their passion. They'll find what it is they're supposed to be doing because then the, the, you just kind of plug into that energy source and you're there. They'll find their power as well. And this is actually really my work, uh, you know, skincare, hair care, rejuvenation, all that stuff. I can do that stuff with my eyes closed, right? As a double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. But then I started to observe what these super high vibe clients of mine were doing, what made them special, what made them radiant. And then I started to clue into this word. And it's actually very much tied to electromagnetics um, of the body and the energetic firing and the light that's happening within the body. So very interesting concept and uh, transformation I've done in my professional and personal life focusing on mainly the 3D and then expanding into this, this, this thing called radiance. So this is really what I love teaching at the school of radiance.com. So that when you enter a room, you have everybody notice you for all the right reasons. And I don't see anybody really teaching it in this way. So I'm really curious, Patrick, what was your first impression of me? Oh, no, I thought you were very radiant. I mean, you're always smiling. You look like somebody you want to talk to, you know, that's important. I mean, didn't look like somebody and you were inviting. I mean, you didn't push people away. I, I, there are a lot of people that, you know, walk into the room and you almost feel like there's a buffer or a barrier between them and other people. So you no, know, I felt, you know, when I met you there in Vegas, you know, felt very open, very responsive and, you know, everything was cool there. You know, there was a few people I didn't even get a chance to talk to. It's like they were there, but they weren't there, you know? So it's, it's always important to try to get out and, you know, you don't, you don't seem like you're afraid to mingle with your energy. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> In a safe way. When I feel safe as a woman, oof, better get ready for my power to come shine through. <laughs> so I felt very safe uh, when we were at this event and with our friends around. And it's really cool for Patrick and I to be in this space. We connected at A4M, but we've been connected through another health entrepreneurship uh, collaborative for many number of years, but we finally crossed paths at just the right time and just the right place with just the right people. So it's really funny when you kind of see everything and these connections happen. Um, and this is what life is all about. It's all about connecting. And it's all about um, finding finding the others that are on your path that are similar and how you can support one another and, and support yourself in the process and all this stuff. And the funny thing you said was, uh, sometimes you speak to people, but they're not quite there. And I would say that that's a presence thing. 
And that's often related to the brain, actually the higher brain constantly getting in the way. I just actually spoke with one of the biggest uh, uh, health and wellness influencers just the other day. He's like, yeah, it's just in my brain too much. Chatting with one of my friends, getting some like business consulting stuff. It's like, I'm giving too much of my higher brain. And that's um, something that we have to train out of is to turn off that rep the reptilian side of like fight or flight or this, that, and just be in this more loving, safe, more balanced energetic space where we can show up as our most high vibe, vibrant and radiant selves, where, which is really where we're going to make the base, biggest impact in the world. So let's get into some of the nitty gritty aspects here. Patrick Porter, what mechanisms does BrainTap use that distinguish it from other guided meditation apps? Well, the main thing is that we need to, we need to really hack, if you want to call it that, um, or help optimize people's thinking because the average person thinks 80,000 thoughts and 60,000 are negative. That's not a negative to you people. That's just our genetic upbringing. I mean, everyone listening to this won the genetic lottery. Your, your genetics made it. You didn't get eaten by the saber tooth tiger. You know, you're here because they made it, but there was a lot of fear along the way. You know, today we don't have to fear as much about walking out of our cave and being eaten by a bigger animal. So the one thing is that we're going to change their thinking. That's number one. And like I said earlier, you're going to change 2,300 gene expressions. When we look at people's brains when they're meditating, what we find is the monkey mind takes over. So we need to somehow downregulate that part of the brain. You're, you, you can call it the primitive brain or the responsive brain, the reactionary brain, uh, the default mode network, all of these names. But the reality is that People meditate mostly don't know how to meditate. So we've actually measured 30,000 brains and we've only had two people that have meditated that actually showed a positive result from their own meditation. And this is because they're talking to themselves too much. So we've we've laid in some sound, some light, binaural beats and isochronic tones are very important. Your brain hears a phantom sound when you put like, say we want to get 10 hertz frequency. Just so the listeners know, frequencies, think of this, if, if we were on your spaceship uh, on the way here, Rachel, to the show, and we were to look at the earth, the earth would be between 0 0.05 and 100. That's the earth frequencies. Those are the frequencies our body is used to, loves them, can respond to it. Now, our brain also has an evoked potential of 0 0.5 to 100, which means the mirror neurons in our brain will match them through something called frequency following response. So if we give the right signals, and I still remember the day that I went to the Ames Institute, the All Indian Institute of Medical Science in India, they said, they told me, this is cheating when you're meditating. Cause I, I took, I showed them that I could, I could improve a guru's brainwaves and I did. And they said, well, this is cheating. And I said, no, it's not. I said, have you ever used a candle? And they said, oh yeah, we use candles. And I said, well, that's cheating. They said, what do you mean? I, I love said, meditating with candles. I said, I said, that's the technology of the day. A fire burns at 10 Hertz frequency. Most of the listeners have probably been in a romantic getaway and they started a fire and everybody gets a little frisky and then something happens. That's because alpha creates acetylcholine. This is a neurotransmitter. It's the, it's the falling in love kind of neurotransmitter. So it's also there in a body of water like the ocean or a river or things. So when people say, I love the ocean or I love the river, basically their chemical reactions in the brain are telling them it's the same physiology as being in love. Now, if we can get somebody into theta, which is very difficult for the average person to get there on their own. So when we get into theta, your brain literally produces GABA. GABA is a precursor to DMT. And for those who have done any research into um, plant-based medicine, you know that DMT is what people like to go on these trips. But we did a study in Dallas where we showed uh, PTSD uh, veterans that they could get the psilocybin trip without a psilocybin because it's basically triggering the brain's own receptors. We have opioid receptors, which we just proved out in Brazil. We, we, beat, opioid, uh, we beat opioids in three different uh, studies for pain, for fibromyalgia. And because the brain, once triggered, it can be triggered by light, sound, and vibration because it doesn't know the difference. What most people don't understand about this reality that we live in, it's not real. It's Our a hologram. Are we living in the matrix, Patrick? Yeah, it's very similar. When our eyes take in 2,000 pieces of information every second, but our eyes feed our brain 10 million pieces of information every second. So where does it get the other information? It makes it up. Our brain makes that information up. Our ears hear 25,000 pieces of information every second. 
we record and remember everything. We don't recall it because it's too much information. But that's why we need that cortical response, the brain. We need these very specific algorithms that we've created over time that the brain listens to. That primitive brain, we need to take it offline because it gets triggered by stress. And this stress, actually, to, to kind of bring it back to your specialty, it triggers the brain. The brain is the number one the gut is the number one brain, I should say. Number two brain is actually your heart. The number three brain is the one between your ears. And most people don't realize that, that these all have biomes. So if you have leaky brain, you have a leaky gut. If you have a leaky gut, I can guarantee you, you're going to have skin problems because you're, that, that's the biggest elimination organ is the skin. So if you're not sleeping good, if you're not sleeping deep, then when you're sleeping deep, what happens is when you get to level four sleep, your brain actually gets into the detox mode. That's the only time. In 2006, they proved that we have a glialymphomic system. And this is what keeps our skin clean and keeps us radiant. And on a physical level is our lymphatic system is working. But before 2015, no medical book ever had uh, the, the lymphatic system above the neck. So what we do with BrainTap is we're going to help people sleep deeper, activate this glialymphomic system. And this all happens without having to do anything. So unlike regular meditation where you have to do, you have to chant. And I do TM meditation. I love it. I've been doing it for years. But I use the brain tap when I do it. I put on, I put on my gamma sessions and I get into high gamma in the morning and I do my uh, infrared sauna and I'm, and I'm doing my brain tap the same. So I'm stacking these, these things to get my body to be healthy and get my mind to the right place. You don't have to do that. You can listen to the sessions as well. But the main thing here is that our brain follows these frequencies. Everything we do, our body is always matching its environment. So if we can get the right environment around us, this is where something called feng shui is so important. People that know the ancient art of placement. So we need that ancient art of placement in our own mind because a lot of people have a cluttered brain and they, they think too much about things that aren't necessary. One of our models, you know, we, we want to we wanna better a billion brains. And how we better that is by down-regulating the brain turning on the parasympathetic system, the rest digest and recovery station. Most people are missing that part of the equation. They want to go, go, go. They're, they're Americans or, you know, they, or they're, you know, they want to succeed. They want to set goals. They want to accomplish things. And this is all great, but without, without downtime, you will get to that point of retirement and you'll expire. What happens to most people? Most people don't live five years after they retire because they didn't set up a plan for their life. They, they thought their job was their life. The job is supposed to give them their life, not be their life. But, you know, a lot of people do that. Well, you couldn't have said all those things any more eloquently. And one of the things I'd love to expand on here is this, this thing that I really had to learn, especially after two car crashes my brain got rocked a couple of times and I had skin breakouts immediately after. So then I started to think, okay, I've been doing these long two hour meditations with the group once a month for like 10 years. When I do these meditations and I'm consistent with it, I notice that my skin's better. When I would do my cold therapy, I would notice that my skin was better. But unfortunately, during that time, I was also in this hyper masculine state. And this is a program that a lot of women when we're talking about the brain here, a lot of women are in this program of high beta, get stuff done all the time. The nervous system is firing nonstop. So some of the things that I like to do is, yes, brain tap is meditation, is getting out in nature for neuroplasticity. I do a ton of four by fouring, taking some time off in Sedona here in the vortexes, which, by the way, I filmed the school of radiance.com in Sedona in the vortexes because the energy here is just so incredible. Now, one of the other things that I wanted to highlight for each and every one of you listening to this episode is that people like Patrick Porter are really special humans. Patrick Porter is someone that when I first saw, I was like, this man is super radiant. I need to know this guy. Also love your wife too. She was very radiant. And we have to pay attention to the founders and CEOs of biohacking technologies these days. There's a lot of biohacking tech out there. This is just like a bit of a warning PSA here that are creating these health trackers that are literally just selling your data. So before purchasing something that's considered trendy or you're seeing lots of advertisements for or affiliate marketing, you need to just take a beat and actually listen to who the CEOs and founders are. Do you get a read that they're a good person? 
Are they trying to do good things in the world? Do they have research and third-party independent lab testing to back up their claims and technologies? Which brain tap does? And speaking of time off, I was actually able to do a brain tap session when I was in Sedona a couple months ago while I was camping. I showed you the photo of that. I know that you and your team was like, oh my gosh, that's the coolest like marketing photo. So I'll be sharing that one online pretty soon here. So I, I would love to just ask a clarifying question here. In your experience, how does enhancing and clearing the brain enhance and clear the skin? From personal experience, I shared after those two car crashes, my skin on my face and my neck was just breaking out like crazy. We need the brain to be functioning optimally so that every other organ system is functioning the way that it needs to be. But I would love for you to expand on the science of this, especially with your PhD background. Yeah. Well, the main thing is that your skin is actually a reflection of your thinking process. So if you're high stress, high anxiety, and let's say that those foods actually are low energy foods, I mean, low energy states, so they attract low energy foods. So typically people will eat more of the foods that will show up as toxins in the body. So your body is going to try to get rid of those toxins. Now, if you're not sleeping, then your brain isn't going to detox. That means your gut isn't going to detox, which means your heart isn't going to function right. You can check these things on heart rate variability as well. If somebody has one of these devices like you're talking about, they can do it with the whoop or the core ring. Please make sure if you're using biohacking tech, at least turn it on airplane mode. I can't stand it. Okay, Patrick, yeah. here we go. This is how we know who the legit healers are and the legit teachers and speakers are is what if they're wearing an aura ring or whatever. You ask them, hey, is that ring on airplane mode? If they say no, I'm like, mm, I feel like there might be someone better <laughs> out there in your field. Do you notice that? Do you, do you pay attention to that stuff? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm on the board of uh, Dan DeBond's Radiation Nation. So they, they in his book, he talks about brain tap being the number one defense against radiation poisoning. And a good friend of mine, Dr. EMF, who actually, there are people that if they walk by a 5G tower, they'll pass out. So, you know, 20% of the people are hypersensitive. And the whole thing is that their body, whether they're too toxic or whether they're just that sensitive, we don't know. But one thing's for sure, they need to ground. So they have to wear, you know, we tell them, hey, you need to wear leather shoes, you know, and be outside. Because if you're outside by those towers, you don't, it doesn't affect you as much if you're on the ground. But if you're wearing those plastic shoes and things like that, I have shoes I walk around in moccasins when I'm at home because I live in the woods. So I don't, I'm not a barefoot person, but I, I do have leather shoes. So these are all really important things. And with, even with brain tap, we tell people download it, put it on airplane mode, use it in airplane mode. We have zero EMF in brain tap. In fact, we we did, we showed that when you turn on brain tap, any radiation that's in the area will be diminished because we use what we find with 470 nanometer light, it actually will neutralize EMF in the field. So there's a there's a lot of benefits to that. And that's why I think Dan in his book talked about brain tap that way. I only wear my bio, I only wear my aura ring when I'm sleeping on airplane mode. So I don't wear it every day because there's no reason to Tell me how far I'm walking. I know, you know right? <laughs> Just one more thing to check on your phone too. Honestly, like if you actually hang out with me, you will know that my phone is on airplane mode and always in a Faraday pouch. And I check it when I want to check it. Yes, I know I don't have children. So sure, it's a different situation. But I'm telling you, those people that have their smartwatches on all the time, they're getting those ding, ding, dings all the time. Some of my girlfriends that live in big cities they're having issues with radiation. They're in cortisol, like they're in adrenal fatigue. We did a study that will blow your mind. We took a person, we took their phone and put it in the other room. We had them hooked up to live EEG and heart rate variability at the same time. And then we were dinging their phone, sending it text messages. Now they couldn't hear it. It was in the other room, but every time it went off, they had a cortical response. There's a quantum entanglement between you and your phone. So that's why you have to put it on airplane mode too, because if it's there, we hear far, we're like superhumans. We just don't acknowledge it. We hear things, you know, and we see things and we experience things that we don't even know that are just beyond. I mean, I think it's evolving now. People are realizing it. But when we showed that to people, they're like, why was my brain doing that? I said, that's when we text your phone. That's why we want you to take your phone out of your room, because if they're not sleeping well and they have their phone right there by their bed, and even though it's on airplane mode, 
in it gives a, a, a message, their brain will still hear it. So we tell them, hey, turn it off at night. You don't need to. I mean, what are you going to do? Wake up in the middle of the night, and answer your phone. You know, if, if it's an emergency, you know, unless you have a parent or a child that's, in, you know, really needs that, I, I would say just leave your phone in the other room. We try to keep our phone out, out of the room and turned off at night. Throw it in a Faraday pouch as well. I love what you mentioned about Tom Brady's clothing, about reflecting back um, different light frequencies that your your bodies give off. Uh, Dr. Beverly Rubick, she's an excellent researcher. And with some of her work, RUBIK, she's one of the leading researchers actually in EMFs as well. Huge paper released in early 2022, went through the peer review process six times. When I submit a paper, it goes through once. Yeah. Imagine a paper going through six times. It's it's super robust. And one of the things that she's actually talked about in some of her previous research is the fact that the face and the hands are some of the highest emitters of light on the body. When I wear my EMF protective clothing that's made of silver threads, I feel so much better. And one of the things I was thinking about a couple of months ago was I wonder if when I'm sleeping in these silver threaded blankets and clothing, you can get all my favorite things at rachelvarga.ca forward slash favorites. And you're going to see brain tap on there very soon also, because now I finally had a Patrick Porter here on the show, but I, I thought to myself, it sort of postulated, Hey, I wonder if not only this clothing is reducing electromagnetic frequency from interfering with my body and messing with my blood and all that stuff. Cause that's essentially what it does mess with your brain too, creates dysregulation and coagulation with your blood and impairment of oxygen nutrients to your cells and um, decrease ability to detox CO2 and metabolic waste products and all these things. I thought to myself, Hey, I wonder if wearing this clothing is actually keeping some of my beautiful, delicious radiant energy to me. So it's not, just, you know, free flow and out from my body. So I have a feeling that's what's happening. And you pretty much just validated that as well. Oh, yeah. The anti-aging bed, we use those. We also do a lot with Clint Hopper, who wrote the book Earthing. And I think those are things that, like they say, the most underprescribed nutrient right now is light. But when we think about how our body, our body needs movement, light, I mean, I always say the first step is nutrition. You cannot think of bad diet. And then you got to move and breathe. You got to get that going. And then you have to have some kind of brain fitness. Number four is you have to have some kind of spiritual connection. Because if you think you're the end of it all, you're in big trouble. You know, there's something greater than all of us creating all this, you know. And so, you know, and I, I'm fortunate enough that I've had experiences where I know with certainty that there's more here than what we are all seeing, hearing and experiencing. This is this is but a shadow world in a bigger world of radiance, as you say. <laughs> All right, so you're preaching to the converted, Mr. Yeah. Pat reporter. <laughs> yeah, uh, some of us, yes, we have been able to see things. Um, no, we're not crazy for saying that. Uh, we may be considered a little bit weird for talking about this stuff, but the way that people are programmed to live now to be like normies is very weird to me. So, getting back to our more ancestral way of being, being outside, being barefoot, moving around outside. Uh, not living in these like smart homes, just like constantly tracking and irradiating you all the time. Get back to basics. But yeah, you definitely count. You can't outwork a bad diet. So there's some other biohacking uh, things that we can uh, do that you'll find through different speakers, presenters I've had here on the podcast and on the favorites page too. Uh, one final question, and then we're going to wrap up here. What drew you to the areas of biohacking and brain entrainment? Well, with the Silva method, they actually had uh, isochronic tones. So you would hear that. So back in the 80s and 70s, when my dad first started, they had a tape that they would play. Uh, if people remember cassettes. That's You know, they would put it in the room and it would make this weird sound and everybody's brain would go to alpha. It just did it. So my dad exposed me to it and and i'm one of those curious people and i used a gsr machine which is galvanic skin response to train my brain and before bio before neurofeedback there was bio, you know the biofeedback you put your hands on this device and you would set it to 10 cycles per second it would measure your resistance or the energy flow through your hands and it would make a sound so i've always been impressed with that and then we started using it with athletes you know get rid of their stress and anxiety and that was basically when i found out about the first time I did the sales machine, which was the big sensory input learning system that I found in Vegas when I was there in 1986. And I had an experience that was 
literally I was, it was an hallucination like you'd never believe. I was on a spaceship. I knew everybody on the ship. We're flying across the universe and I knew everybody. And then she's shaking me. She says, you got to get up. You've been on there for 45 minutes. And I went, I've got to have one of those. She says, well, you're in luck. We have two of them. They're only $10,000. Well, it might as well have been $10 million. So I had no money. So, you know, that's, but to me, that was like, I need to do something with this technology. And I've never let money stand between me and what I want. What kind of spaceship was it, Patrick? Yeah. What's that? (laughs) What kind of spaceship was it? (laughs) It was clear. It was actually translucent. I could see out of every corner. I would look around. I was zooming across the, uh, the universe. It was like, it was an incredible experience. And I've, I've not been able to match that again, but um, I've been, I, I used to do Kundalini yoga. So I've had a lot of out of body kind of experiences with, with breath work. But this was like, I don't know what happened. It like triggered something in me. I must have been into technology in some past life or something. I'm not sure how that happened. But I've always been drawn to electronics, even when electronics wasn't what it is today. I mean, when I was a kid, I went to elect- I went to school for electronics. So that was just when solenoids were around. There was nothing like we have today. I mean, today we have real electronics. You know, when people think about crystals, they don't realize that that phone they have in their hand has about 2 million crystals in it. You know, they call them, you know, they're basically transacting information. So, you know, who knows what they had in the ancient times? You know, I always tell people we look at ancient traditions, we make modern technology. That's what I feel my mission is on Earth is to bring the ancient traditions back with some modern technology attached to them. Yeah, we tend to forget this, that uh, different crystals are technology to the effect that some of the most brilliant minds are actually collecting data of our civilization and putting them on these little tiny crystals, like basically the data of our civilization to store it just in case it hits the fan and something happens is being stored on like crystals. So (laughs) yeah, there's actually a lot of really cool things around me uh, right now. I'm actually at a friend's house and uh, yeah, there's some pretty pretty neat things. I'll show you off screen uh, Patrick Porter. I don't want to show things on screen that I'm not supposed to, but (laughs) yeah, there's a lot to be said for electromagnetics and making sure that the energy around us is coherent. Uh, You mentioned HRV and heart math. These are all really important concepts to be aware of, but definitely it's a people place thing uh, situation as well. And to be open to receiving um, interactions with people, places and things like you mentioned during some of your meditations, I've had incredible breathwork meditation experiences, uh, especially recently getting into holotropic breathing, getting into types of breathing that has been studied since the 80s and having really profound um, experiences. So when you do the work, you're going to have incredible experiences. And then you're going to notice this ripple effect in your personal and professional life. And you're going to be more in alignment and have incredible connections with people who feed and fuel your soul and help you to be better and be who you are meant to be in the world and do what you're meant to do in the world. And for Pat, for Patrick Porter and I, it's to, it's, you know, it's love and light, good technology. It's be radiant. It's be good people. So it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. I can't wait to do a live session on social media as well. I'd love to have you back on the show. Uh, we're like kindred spirits here. I'm sure we're soul family million times over trillions of years over kind of thing. But do you have any closing words? Patrick Porter, CEO, founder of Breakup. I think that just know that you're far greater than other people have told you about. Don't let other people define who you are. They have no idea. You, they're only getting a glimpse, a shadow of your real self. You know, be brave and let yourself expand in ways that you never thought possible because the world is waiting for you. All you need to do is wake up and start living your best life now. Don't wait for something else or someone else to do it. Today's that day. Seize the moment and go for it. Oh, you're so inspiring. I know we've got a little bit over for time with recording, but we're just having a lot of fun together. I can't wait to connect with you again this week. So stay tuned and stay connected with Patrick Porter over at Braintap.com. You can find his work at Braintap Tech on social media and Dr. Patrick Porter, DR Patrick Porter. 
And thank you so much for being on the show. I look forward to seeing you again at uh, future events. Hopefully we'll connect at Dave Asprey's biohacking conference in Orlando at some point soon. And it's just been a pleasure. And I can't wait to have you back on the show again here on the Rachel Varga podcast. Thank you everyone for listening to today's lesson, session, episode, whatever you want to call these talks. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions or feedback, reach out to me directly by email info at rachelvarga.ca. Hang out at Rachel Varga official on social media. Be sure to subscribe, like, share this episode with a friend or family member and download my free nine keys to slowing aging at rachelvarga.ca slash slow aging. Work with me one-on-one, take my seasonal skin camps and register for the school of radiance.com all over at rachelvarga.ca. I'll see you all again soon. And Patrick, can't wait to have another conversation with you this week. Thank you for your time and the important work that you're doing. Thank you.